Seven years ago we screamed at a tall guy in a costume and today I will make it happen again by remaking my own Slender Man for the Oculus Quest using Unity. Here is all the steps that I will need to get through. First, the creation of a scary forest environment, then coding some AI for Slender, optimize everything to export to the VR headset and finally integrating virtual reality. For this project, I will need two assets from the asset store which are free, the standard asset by Unity and the Oculus integration. For the forest environment, I use the new terrain system of Unity. Using this system, I could select a particular brush to add height. Select these two textures from the standard asset to paint on it, add some vegetation like this nice looking tree called Broadleaf Mobile that came with the standard asset also and which is optimized for mobile games, but also add some grass using this texture. And after some time playing with all of them, this is how it went. Finally, I also placed these 5 free assets in my scene to add some points of interest for the player. I will put the download link for each of them in the description below. I get this question a lot lately, now that we have our virtual environment, how can I test it without having to export it to my Oculus Quest? Personally, what I like to do is to delete the main camera and drag the OVR player controller prefab from the Oculus integration package into my scene. With the OVR player controller, you can either directly test your application in VR on your computer if you have an Oculus Rift, and if you have no VR headset plug, there is this awesome script called OVR Headset Emulator on the OVR camera rig, which will let you move the player and look around with the mouth if you press the control key. Oh, and uh, you might want to set the tracking type to stand, otherwise this will happen. By doing so, I was able to walk around my scene and have a better understanding at what the player will feel like moving in my forest. Now, what I needed to do was making everything scary. I started by reducing the intensity of the main light. Then, I created a sky with a dark blue gradient. Finally, what's more scary than using a flashlight? This is why I used this asset and put it as a child of the camera game object. Oh, and to top it off, I also made this scary music to play in the background. And here we go, following this step, I had everything ready for the environment of my Slender Man replica. Let's move on to part 2, the creation of Slender Man. For the visual, I have found this nice looking 3D model on Sketchfab that I have imported into my scene. After playing the original Slender game, this is how I believe that Slender works. 1. If we are looking at him or camera glitch. 2. When we don't look at him for a certain period of time, he respawns somewhere else. 3. Slender is always facing us. For this first one, I have imported this awesome camera glitch effect from Keijiro that I will control using two animation. And I will change the animation state using a new script attached to my camera which will calculate the angle and the distance in which Slender is. If the angle is less than 50 degrees and the distance is less than let's say 50 meters, I will play the glitch animation. And there we have it, the glitch effect when we look at Slender is down. What do you think of it? Ok, now for respawning Slender Man, here is how I've made it. I will count the time that we are not looking at him, and if the time is greater than let's say 8 seconds, I will reset the value and spawn Slender somewhere else near the player on top of the terrain. To get the terrain position, I will shoot a raycast from the sky to the ground, and I will spawn Slender where the raycast hit the ground. For the third behavior, I have made Slender always face the camera with this simple line of code. And here we have it, a function in Slender Man that can jump scare the player if we are not looking at him. Now this is where things are getting important so keep following me. If we were building a game right now to the Oculus Quest, it wouldn't work. 
Our scene is way too complex at the moment to be exported to a standalone device like the Quest. So I'm going to give you some tips on how to make it possible. My first tip is the lighting. You can optimize a light that should not change over time by baking it. To do this, set your light to big or mixed and go mark as static all objects in your scene that are not moving. Then in the lighting settings, click on bake. Now second tips, the occlusion cooling. You can use the occlusion cooling to render only what the player is looking at. To do this, go in the occlusion cooling window and click on bake. You can see how the result will help our application to only render what's necessary. Finally, we can optimize the terrain settings. I personally found these settings to be a good optimization for terrain. Uh, for example, I reduced the number of triangles in my terrain mesh by setting the draw error to 200. All these concessions can impact the visual of our game, so be careful when using them. A good game developer should always find the good balance between optimization and visual fidelity. Also, there are a lot more techniques to optimize the game, so if you guys are interested in a more in-depth tutorial, let me know in the comment section below. Now let's get back to our game. To give a player a goal, I have actually made 5 pages for the player to collect like in the original game. For that, I have added a box collider set to trigger and add this little script that will check if the player touched the page. And if it does, we will increment the number of pages collected, check if we have collected them all, play a little audio and finally destroy the page. And here we have it, my Slenderman replica for VR is ready to be exported to the Oculus Quest. To do so, I have used my own tutorial on how to make an Oculus Quest game, so go check it out if you haven't already. The link will pop on top of the screen. And after all, this is how it turned out. And that is all for today, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoy making it. If you want to learn more about VR, check this video to learn how to make your first VR game and this one to see me do Tetris in less than 10 minutes. And if you want to support my channel, you know how it goes, share this video, subscribe and smash the like button.